Well, all right, all right, all right, all right. I think it's time that we dig back into, dig back into the all important topic of concealing a pistol for self-protection. All the guns that we're working with today are cleared out. There is nobody behind the camera. Precursor to this video back about three years ago or so, we did one on the channel here. It's number 10 of must have skills. And I gotta admit, I dropped the ball on that video. I was speaking at the time to some stuff that was happening that we were seeing in the industry or some stuff that was popping up on social media and missed too many other people that later saw that video. So Drew will tag that video. And if you have come to this video from Must Have Skills 10, I think this one is gonna do a better job of the broad discussion of how to conceal a pistol. With everything we do at Carry Trainer, we start out with this simple question. What's my goal? What's my goal? So my goal is not just to figure out how to take a gun and hide it on me. My goal is to have a firearm with me, a lawfully owned firearm, to protect myself from criminal predation, to protect somebody else, if that's my choice, family, loved ones, whoever. That's why I have it. So. If I start with that concept, then I'm gonna think about what are the parameters that help that happen? Meaning, what supports me having this tool to win in violence? So there's the key. What supports me having this to win in violence? It's not just hiding it, right? Because I could take like this really beautiful Langdon Beretta and I could bury it in a backpack. I could, I could just shove it deep into a trench coat or something and I've concealed it, but do I have it in a manner that I can get it out and use it if so needed, right? So three things to think about when we, when we are testing or evaluating training or equipment. Is it robust? Is it repeatable? Is it reliable? I'll say them again, robust, repeatable, reliable. Robust, repeatable, reliable. And some of these things kind of dovetail into the next one. Robust, does the system with how I'm doing the thing, now don't get wrapped around the axle, but just understand the broad point. Does the thing I'm training, will it stand up to violence? Is it robust? Will it stand up to somebody putting their hands on me, yanking me, if I fall down, if I have to uh, engage in a bunch of rapid movements, if I am fighting to my feet from the ground? Uh, is it something that supports me giving or receiving force, meaning somebody knocking my ass to the ground or me having to do the same? Does the system, not just the belt, the holster, the gun, but how I'm training with it, how I'm concealing it, does it support robust movements? So that's one. Robust, repeatable. Is how I have this stuff on my body something that no matter what, through good training, not just because I put it on me, but no matter what, I'm gonna find it, how I left it, right? And it's gonna stay together and it's gonna be in the condition I wanna find it in. Robust, repeatable, reliable. So think about this stuff as we're doing that. Am I moving the position of the gun on my body? So for this video, we're really gonna talk about belt mounted stuff. I'm not gonna talk about uh, things like uh, the, the uh, shoulder holster or ankle holster. It's not that that's a wrong thing, that's just not what I'm talking about. So we're gonna talk almost exclusively on belt mounted setups. Uh, why? Because that works for most people for most circumstances. Some of these other uh, very particular carry locations, I'm not saying that they're wrong, they're just a very specific need and a very specific uh, application for them. So, belt mounted. Foundation is gonna be the belt. I've got a couple of really good belts here. These are, are uh, this is 100% leather belt and this is a reinforced leather belt. This is from my good friends at Flagrant Beard. Flagrant Beard. This is a handmade leather belt made in the USA. It's a good sturdy belt. And this one's from Vetter Holsters. Very rigid. You'll see a little bit of the difference. This one's natural leather. This one's leather that's reinforced with Kydex. So as far as just being super durable, and again, this is concealed carry stuff, not stuff outside the waistband, you want something good and heavy. What I'm wearing, I like best. So I'm gonna pull my holster off, and this isn't a sales pitch for any of these, I'm just telling you why I use what I use and uh, what it is. So this is from EDC Belt Company. It's a scuba 
uh, webbing belt. And it's got this uh, really cool figure eight buckle here, which is brass, I do believe, so it won't rust. And you lace the belt through, and it uses hook and loop, known as Velcro. And depending on the size of the belt you order, you have a series of, I don't know, three to four inches of play. If you gain weight, you lose weight, you put on bulkier pants, you put a bigger or smaller pistol in, uh, you ate too much, you wanna let a little bit out, and you can adjust it, unlike a leather belt like this, where you only have like one inch holes, you can adjust it infinitely. Now there are some other belts out there like the uh, Next Belt, Core Essentials, things like that, that are great belts too. Why do I like this one? Well, part of concealing a gun is hiding it. So the more stuff I put around my waistline, the more stuff that I have to hide. And this belt is just super thin. It's probably as thin as you can get away with still hold up the gun and be comfortable. I love these belts. I use these belts often. You can see this one's well worn, but if it comes down to it, this extra three quarters of an inch of material, especially in the warmer months where you have a lighter shirt on, it's hard to hide this. And the more stuff that gets on there, the more it packs out the middle of your body. The foundation, we wanna start with a high quality belt. I just gave you three. EDC Belt Company, Flagrant Beard, Vetter Holsters. All make some good belts and there's others, there's others. Uh, all of those companies, I have to believe we have a code for that's Carry Trainer. So next up, the holster. So we're gonna be talking about inside and outside the waistband because you can conceal outside the waistband and then put a cover garment on. The holster that I just had on, with this Glock 43X is a great holster from Dark Star Gear. I do not have a wedge on here. We'll talk briefly about wedges. I've got a, a couple of wedge holsters here. Where's one? Here's another variant of this with a wedge. And as we pick these things, we wanna think about a few things. One, does the holster maker actually understand what they're doing? There's a lot of junk sold online that is made by people that understand how to bend Kydex, which is a grade of plastic, but they don't really understand what they're doing. Dark Star, Dark Star Gear is one of a handful of great companies. This clip made by a great company. This is uh, from Discreet Carry Concepts. And I've got their clips on a lot of stuff. Here's another one. This is from KSG Armory. Uh, my friends out in Colorado, Colorado, if you live there, Colorado for the rest of us. This is another clip from Discreet Carry Concepts. And you might think, ah, oh, the clip's not that important. Au contraire, my friend, that clip is everything because the more that that clip comes out, I'm gonna grab another one off the body, like this plastic clip, these, do they work? Sure, but the thickness of that versus this piece of spring steel, night and day. Also, robust, remember, back to robust. In order to get this one off of my belt, or this one, if you look close, there is a small clip on the inside that hooks underneath the belt. You'll probably break the holster before you get this clip off accidentally. You have to reach underneath and peel it off of the belt, which in a scuffle is, unless somebody puts their finger on the clip and pries it off, it's not gonna happen. So that brings up another reason I like this belt design. So most belts, this clip, or whatever the clip style is, forget, forget the specific clip, like Vetter uses something similar. This is a Vetter holster, and I'm gonna talk about the, their holsters in a second. Just goes over the belt, right? So I've gotta just lift it up and off. Well, with the EDC belt company, I get, when I put the tail, I get this extra layer of protection where the tail is now holding the clip uh, down. So it's like the clip is locked in and then you get this tail that goes over it. You can see that, right? It's pretty sweet. Wings on a holster. Here's a better light tuck. Here's a wing. People ask me, do I need the wing? Do I not need the wing? I'm gonna use this light tuck with and without the wing. I've got two of them here. So here's one no wing. Here's one with the wing. No, no wing with the wing. You see the little wing there? So here's the one without the wing, and this is for a SIG P365. I've got a, an XL lower on this gun. 
So XL lower right here, gun's empty. I'm gonna recover that to the holster. So no wing. So check this out, I'm gonna turn sideways. Look at this, I can put basically between my tummy and the pistol grip, I can put like two fingers in there. Let's check out with the wing now. So same holster, except this one's got the wing set up. Lock that down. Ah, that's something else you gotta be careful of. Don't pitch yourself in there. So look at that. I can't fit those fingers in there anymore. What happened? So the other one, I could fit two fingers in with the wing, no fingers. So what that wing is doing is your belt is pushing and steering it against your body. You are still adding some bulk. The bulk happens under the belt because this wing is forcing this into your body. It's an ingenious little tool. Most makers uh, incorporate such a thing. But again, you look and that thing is now flat to the body. So with my shirt down, you really see nothing there. And now some of this depends on your body type. If you've got a little bit of a belly you've earned through snacking, that gun is gonna end up in this orientation, depending on how high or low you, low you carry it, it's gonna end up getting pushed out from the body, which brings up the next point, ride height. If you notice here, from my belt line to the pistol grip of this, of this SIG, pardon me, I can fit my middle finger uh, and index finger in there quite well. I've measured uh, various people's hands and I found about five eighths of an inch to an inch is a good number. So the deeper it is in your pants, I'm gonna just take the belt loop off and I'm gonna bury it a little bit without having to adjust it. So if I push this in deeper, as you can see, I no longer can get my fingers between the grip and my belt line, which means that to draw the gun, kind of have to, I have to pull the gun up to get it out. So we want to set the ride height up, which means that the holster has to ha either be built to have a correct ride height or have some kind of adjustment. The um, blasters here from Darkstar, it's got the ability to move up and down. Uh, I've got some JM Custom Kydex. These are soft loops, soft loops, a different attachment point very secure attachment point. These allow you to move it up and down in your pants. Uh, where's another one that I like? Right here, uh, clear. These are those discrete carry concept clips here again. You start to see the differences in holsters when you get to these nuances. If they don't have some of these attachment points, I feel like a slob just sitting here with my belt hanging loose. So we'll go back again with this claw, wing, whatever you want to call it. There's different names in the industry. But I want to be able to get my fingers in there so that I can secure a master grip. I don't want to be fighting to get my hands on the gun. Robust, repeatable, reliable. So as I set all this stuff up in the comfort of my home and I find out what's the best spot on my body, can I form that master grip surely every time? That's important because if I need this thing in violence, I don't want to be figure, having to figure out how to get my hand on it. So five eighths of an inch to an inch is about the best spot. Why not more? Well, it's a trade-off between concealability and accessibility. So the higher this gun comes up, right? Now I've got all kinds of access, except now this gun is going to be up on my tum-tum, leaning out farther and farther away from the body. There is some makers that do the holsters that you see for appendix area over the, over the penis carry uh, that have a spare mag and the gun. And guys are lifting those higher, higher, higher because then when they sit, they're not down into the pubic bone. The challenge with that is, depending on body type, is that thing ends up pushed farther and farther away from the body. So there's a fine line between accessibility and concealability. I want it deep enough to hide a bunch of the gun, high enough to get my master grip, but no more either way. So I'm gonna take this guy off for a minute, and we're gonna talk briefly about uh, outside the waistband. This is a great holster from uh, JM Custom Kydex. Here's one that I, Man, these are getting dirty from all the riding around. Here's one that I use a lot, uh, especially in the months of the year here where we lived in the Midwest, 
where I can have a jacket on for months at a time, months and months at a time, and it's completely reasonable. So this holster uses some belt loops outside the waistband, and I would probably switch with this rig because I can this that time of year to my heavier belts. Grabbed a Langdon Beretta. This plaster is empty. And we're in the outside the waistband here from JM Custom Kydex. It's a great holster, good attachment point. This is something going out and about with something simple. My, my coach for jujitsu, Dan Hart here. Shout out to him. One of his sweatshirts, I'm easily concealed. Nobody can see this. I can be sitting at dinner, going to a movie, and have immediate access to my blaster, right? Zip this up, and you will not see it. And that's part of that is the way that JM manufactures the holster. It's tight to the body, and you can order them with different cants. So guys will ask about that. Do I want a straight holster or one canted? Well, if you look at this, the more straight up and down this is, the more this pistol grip is going to push away from the small of your back. The more canted it is, the more it's going to hide along the profile of your body. See that? The thing to think about is the more straight up and down it is, the easier your draw stroke's going to be, but you're going to lose concealability, right? The trade-off of accessibility, concealability. The more canted it is, as you move it to the center line of the body, you will now have better concealability, but as you go to draw the pistol, you are going to have to cant your wrist back to come up and out of that holster. So food for thought on an outside the waistband. Something like this could be slid pretty far around to the small of the back. You see that? So I push this out kind of over my butt cheek, and that really hides well. If I, depending on what I'm doing, looking straight on now, you don't even see that from your angle. I could, I could hide that pretty well even with a t-shirt. Thing is now, accessibility versus concealability, I need to come all the way around to the small of my back to draw that pistol. The reason that we look at these different positions, body types change, perhaps the firearm that you are required to carry for your job changes, perhaps your location, the weapon that you're allowed to carry in a certain location, the weather, right? If I'm in an area where I can't be walking around in t-shirts, like here in the Midwest in January or Alaska in frickin' October, right? Uh, you're, you might get away having a larger pistol on you. So here's the thing. Some people talk about winter versus summer guns. I tend to carry the same gun all the time. Repeatability and reliability come through focused training. Imagine this, you're in your, your car, you know where all the controls are, how to adjust the, the radio, the defroster, the turn signals, the windshield wipers, how to adjust the mirrors. If you're in your vehicle, you know how to do all of that usually without thinking if you've driven the car for any length of time. Now you get in your wife's car or you rent a car or you borrow a car. You know how to drive that car. It's still a car, but when it comes down to things like finding the defroster, adjusting the mirrors, you have to stare at it a little bit and try to figure some of this stuff out. As we change platforms, meaning the different gun, the different holster, the different position on our body, not that we forget how to draw, but something that we may have trained and gotten ingrained to a subconscious level isn't so easy. If the goal, back to the beginning, is to have this weapon on you to protect yourself in violence from criminal predators, I wanna set myself up for success. So personally, I'm a big fan of these Dark Star holsters for the discussion. And I'm gonna give you guys a little list here at the end of some friends that I think make great stuff. This isn't a, a, a sales pitch on a gun or a holster, but I've got, in this case, a Glock 43X from Boresight Solutions. That gun carries 15 rounds in the magazine, one in the chamber, so 16 rounds of nine mil. It's gonna be super well, solid copper hollow points for me. I'm gonna have a backup magazine in my pocket. And if I've got this T-shirt on, if I go to a wedding, 
and I've got a sport coat on or a suit, if I go to a funeral and I've got a sport coat on or a suit, if I've got on something like this hoodie or I've got a sweatshirt on or a flannel, I can have this same tool with me. And maybe, just maybe, I might have to move from here out to a hip location uh, dependent on the clothing. If I'm in a fitted dress shirt, it's pretty hard for me if I've got a fitted dress shirt on to hide a pistol in front of my body. So I'll move it onto my hip and my sport coat will now hide it. And I will train with it before I go out of the house and get 50 or 100 dry draw reps to make sure it's burned in where that gun is, burned in where that gun is. So a big part of this is making sure that you're training consistently. So I think some of the misconceptions that I screwed up, I screwed up in that earlier video uh, from a few years back, what I was talking about a lot in that discussion because I was seeing it was printing. A lot of the comments, and you may have some comments, leave those here, were, I don't care what people see or think. Well, my goal is to win in violence, not start it. My goal is to stay away from the cops unless they're my friends and not be involved in any nonsense. My goal is to not scare somebody in the general public, even if you think it's your right and they shouldn't be scared. Tough cookies, people think and do stupid things. If I'm concealing a gun, I want it concealed. So I want to dress appropriately. One of the challenges we have is, man, I own all these clothes. I just want to put the gun underneath them. You maybe need to go from a size large to an extra large. Maybe you need to order your pants. If you're a 34, you need to order a 36. If you're a 40, you need to order a 42. You get slightly larger clothes and the baggier material, the, the bulk of the material helps hide the gun. But some takeaways. Let's talk about this. We want to push that gun into the body as much as possible, regardless of where it is. But again, remember there's the trade-off of concealability, accessibility. But with these things like these claws and properly made holsters, not made by these, there's all these people on the internet I started to talk about earlier that sell holsters. They're cheap, we ship fast. What they're telling you is we want your money, we don't know what we're doing, we're selling you junk. We want the holster tight to the body, we want a sturdy belt, and we want the belt as slim as possible because the less bulk that we have around our waist, the more easily these things are gonna be concealed. We want the holster to hold that gun, that grip, between that 5 8 of an inch and an inch above the belt line. Something else we want is we want a holster. See this? I'm having to yank this around, but this gun's not tilting. I don't want a gun where it ends up like this in my pants, tip, tip down. Have you ever seen a holster or had a holster where you felt like you had to keep adjusting it because the gun, the weight of the magazine would tip the gun in the holster? I don't want that, which is why a company like say this with these two clips does a really good job of putting the weight of the gun over a little wider area. Let's just take a look at this one. For the life of me, I can't remember the name of this holster. I've just got too darn many. How many? A lot, that's how many. So we'll grab this one. This full-size Beretta from Langdon that's got a red dot on it. So there's quite a bit of weight there. But you see, the, the point that moves is actually the flex from my belt. The holster and the connection between the holster and the belt, that's not shifting. That's good, that's what you want. Now I've got this full-size gun that's hidden quite well because it's tight to the body. It's not allowed to move against the belt. The belt is sturdy, but not too sturdy. And here's something else to add. The reason that companies like EDC Belt Company and all these holster makers exist is because there's so much junk out there. In order for me to have this thing and have it accessible and want to carry it on a daily basis where it's not uncomfortable, I need gear that makes the stuff as comfortable as possible. So this is stuff like this does it. So selection of gear is a big portion of all of this. I made a cursory list of some of the holsters that that I use. JM Custom Kydex is a great one. Dark Star Gear is a great one. KSG Armory, TXC holsters, Vetter holsters, Safari Land. I love Safari Land holsters. I've got a holster right here that has level one retention. 
This is an inside the waistband holster from Safari Land that's got retention. Safari Land is a, a well known maker. And this is a great holster. Check that out. In order to defeat that holster, your master grip gets formed and it pushes a lock button. It's great, great product. So Safari Land, pure custom. If you're a leather person, pure custom makes them leather holsters. And uh, EDC Belt Company is the company that I told you about earlier, as well as Flagrant Beard and Vetter with the, these here. And there's other good belt companies out there. Some other ones off the top of my head that make good products. Tier One Concealed, another great holster maker. There's good stuff out there. And I think, how do you know? Well, I guess you could take my word for it, but I would go look at who uses the stuff. If you see something being sold online on Amazon or on Facebook and you're getting uh, bombarded with ads, most of the good holster makers don't need to do ads like that because people talk about them. The companies I'm telling you about, most of them have a waiting list to get their holsters because people know that they're good and that they, they make quality stuff. If it's too good to be true, it's 20 bucks and it works for every holster, it's probably not good. A good holster costs anywhere from 50 to $150. No joke, I've got five or six crates like this full of holsters. Why? Well, I mean, there's six or seven guns just sitting on the table and each of them you could have two or three holsters for depending on what you're doing. But one of the reasons I end up with so many holsters is people don't know when they buy stuff what they need. And so I end up having holsters for classes so that people have something to train with because they show up with something that's not safe, that's not durable, that's not repeatable, that's not robust, that's not reliable. And so I bring stuff to make sure that we have things for students. Also, years ago when I started to figure this stuff out, you end up buying things and say, this is junk. So I keep that, I've got a box of junk that I could use for students to say, here's why you don't want to look at it. So recap, recap, solid foundation with the belt, solid holster that has solid connection points. I can't say enough about discrete carry concepts and their clips. Uh, something like the soft loops from JM Custom Kydex is another animal altogether. Soft loops are great, but for a metal attachment point uh, like, I've got too many things on here, like this here, or like, where'd you go, where'd you go? like these here. Discrete carry concepts is top notch stuff. The ride height matters, ride height matters. Five eighths of an inch to an inch so that you can procure that good master grip as you go to the gun. And then how you train, place the thing on your body and train with it there, train with it there, train with it there. Don't move stuff around like crazy. Don't switch guns like crazy, don't switch holsters, stick with a platform and train. If you wanna get good with your sword, train with the sword. Don't just keep picking up different tools. That's how mastery comes from sticking with a platform. Different guns are fun, but remember the goal of why you have this. I have it to protect life and liberty and limb. So I wanna invest my energy into it. Lastly, the mindset with which we approach this training, I do believe matters as much or more than everything. I have the clothing to hide the gun. I have the gun to protect myself. I need to train to be able to recognize trouble. I need to train to be able to have a quick draw stroke to access the gun regardless of where it is on my body. I need to train to be able to decipher the trouble that might be out there hopefully keeping myself out of it. Hey man, I don't want any trouble, have a good day. But if need be, does my training get that gun up and out repeatably and reliably? Be well, don't be dickheads. I hope that I dug a little bit deeper into my initial goal here. The gear, how you set it up, and then how you train with it. This wasn't meant to be an end all be all on the carrying of guns, but some things that I think are hyper valuable if you're going to put one on you to protect yourself. I don't want you to have this gun fall out in public, so we wanna make sure that the retention on the gun, which is why we're getting good holsters, is gonna hold it in place. I wanna make sure that your belt is gonna keep it there. God forbid you get in some type of scuffle or scrap. And then I want everything to be on your body. Here's one of my mantras in training that I have students say aloud. 
put the gun away in the condition that you want to find it in should you need it to save yourself in a fight. Put the gun away, reholster it in the condition that you'd want to find it in and the location, right? That's part of that, should you need it in a fight. Mickey with CarryTrainer.com, Drew at the editing desk and who's behind so many of these awesome videos. I hope you guys dug this. Questions, comments, throw them in the comment section below. Come out to one of our events, the S12 events coming up in October 2022. It's gonna be awesome. CarryTrainer.com for information. Check out some of the amazing makers of product that we showed you here today, from Langdon Tactical to Boresight Solutions to the holster and belt makers. There's codes for most of those companies to save you money and they're not paying me to do that. I wanna help my friends and I want you to get good stuff. Don't be dickheads, tell somebody you love them. Peace out. Industry focuses on the door, and that's where all their weight is, and all their they show all the bolts and corner bolts and all the stuff that you cannot pry these open. Take a circular saw, cheap circular saw with a carbide blade, and we've got videos on this. It's, I mean, it's a twenty-dollar blade. I cut a gun safe completely in half. It's a big safe. It's a minute twenty seconds, and I cut a twelve-inch hole in the side in eighteen seconds. A determined thief who knows you have a safe will, will open it up in minutes. That's not. That's not why you have a safe. Now we look at storage from a different standpoint. Um, secure it, you know, and that's our, going back to our military, how, how and why the military stores firearms. If you're gonna store firearms in your home or secure them, secure them in a method or in a way that gives you an advantage, that puts you at a tactical advantage. Most people own firearms. One of the reasons is home defense. Even your avid hunter say, well, I'm a hunter, but if something breaks in, I, I still want a firearm. So store them in a way that, that gives you an advantage. And we use, our term is principles of decentralized storage. Break up the safe, store in small modular cabinets located throughout your home. Mm -hmm. Put you in a much, you're much safer, the guns are safer for a lot of reasons we can go into, and you're never more than three seconds away from a firearm that is truly child safe. What's the method of entry into these safes? Is there uh, more we use, one? We, we use simple push button locks, okay. no, no, um, like the fingerprint readers we would never use. Yeah. We consider this never fail technology. If somebody is in your house with a gun shooting at you, it has to open in, in, in a second or two. You don't have in a fingerprint reader, if your fingers are dirty, wet, gloves, there's so many reasons they won't open. Mm -hmm. 